Chairman Gosar, Ranking Member Stansbury, extreme environmental groups have broad sway in the Interior Department. In my remarks, I plan to show how these groups affect policy, how their former staff now help lead Interior, and how a leftist group that demonizes conservatives is influencing Interior's efforts to be more inclusive. In July 2023, the Sierra Club and its allies asked an agency at Interior to crack down on oil and gas in the Gulf of Mexico. Two months later, Interior released a five-year plan that included the smallest number of oil and gas lease sales in the Gulf in history. We know because Secretary Holland bragged about it. This plan is currently facing a lawsuit because America's largest fossil fuel industry association says the plan will harm American consumers and threaten our energy security. Earlier this very month, Interior announced its five-year plan for wind energy. While it restricts oil and gas to three lease sales, it plans for 12 offshore wind auctions. The Sierra Club celebrated the move and pledged to continue collaborating with the Biden administration. Oil is cheaper and more reliable than wind energy, and America has the best track record of generating the least emissions while drilling for oil. Wind also requires strip mining for rare earth minerals, leaving toxic byproducts. Yet Interior is promoting wind energy. The left's dark money network helps explain why. While Democrats were obsessed with the Koch brothers, a New York Times analysis shows that the left's dark money network spent more than comparable conservative groups. The left-wing Arabella Advisors and the Tides Foundation set up nonprofits to allow donors to pour money into specific projects without disclosing what the money does. The Arabella Network's new venture fund funded and launched Governing for Impact, for example. Governing for Impact bragged that the Biden administration acted on more than 20 of its recommendations. The Center for American Progress, which advocates for environmental justice, received more than $3 million from the Arabella Network. Meanwhile, the Department of the Interior is directing $2 billion in funds through the so-called Inflation Reduction Act. Who determines where these funds go? Center for American Progress founder, John Podesta. Meanwhile, the National Wildlife Federation, an environmentalist group that promoted Al Gore's film, An Inconvenient Truth, received nearly $1 million via Arabella nonprofits. NWF's former employees now hold positions of power at Interior. Four-year NWF staffer Tracy Stone Manning is now the director at the Bureau of Land Management. She notoriously sent a threatening letter on behalf of eco-terrorists who spiked trees to cause physical harm to loggers. She later says she does not condone tree spiking or terrorism of any kind. Laura Danielle Davis, who worked at Interior under Obama before joining the NWF for three years, is now the second in command at Interior. She's only in an acting role, however, because the Senate would not confirm her. Senator Joe Manchin opposed her for valuing the left's radical climate agenda, his words, ahead of Alaska's energy needs. The National Wildlife Federation also takes credit for climate smart conservation, a project it claims it developed with its federal agency partners, such as the National Park Service. Of course, these ties to the interior shouldn't come as a surprise, a 2009 Inspector General report found that staff at the Bureau of Land Management had worked so closely with NWF that they may have violated the law. NWF staff were writing and editing official BLM materials. Finally, Interior recently convened a committee to reevaluate place names to remove derogatory terms. That seems noble, but Secretary Holland named a divisive figure to the committee, Kimberly A. Probolis had previously worked with the Southern Poverty Law Center to help with its project shaming officials into removing public symbols of the Confederacy. In a meeting of the Interior Committee, she noted this previous work, expressing her gratitude for the chance to continue to work toward racial and social justice with Interior. The SPLC, which has lobbied Interior on historical designations, praised Holland for including Probolis, suggesting the committee should use SPLC resources on hate. No one should have to visit a national park whose name is rooted in legacies of hate and white supremacy, SPLC's Leisha Brooks said. Yet the SPLC is far from a reliable arbiter of hate. It is notorious 
for putting mainstream conservative and Christian groups on a hate map with KKK chapters, scaring donors into ponying up cash. If Interior wants to avoid being derogatory, it shouldn't rely on the SPLC. In short, the left's dark money network is propping up radical environmentalist groups that help steer policy at Interior. Thank you.